Hey, what's going on everyone? It's Sean from All Things EV and I'm on top of a roof here <laughs> of my friend and real estate client, Scott. Thank you so much for taking time to um, talk about your experience with uh, being a Tesla owner and yeah. solar. So um, a little bit of backstory, um, about a year ago, maybe about a year ago you had reached out. Yes. You're, you're a little, little more than a year, year and a half now. Mm -hmm. um, you had recently moved to the Denver area from Texas and um, we started the hunt last November. Does that sound about right? Last, Something last, like that, last yeah. December, November. Um, and uh, we talked through a few things that you sort of wanted and, and needed. Um, one of the things was that as a Tesla owner, um, you wanted to make sure that you were going to be able to charge your car, your vehicle, in, right. in, in the garage. And then you had also had some interest in, in solar. So yes. <laughs> there's, there, there's a few things that, that typically, um, when I work with a real estate client who is interested in solar, that um, you have to keep in mind when you're on that house hunt, number one of them, number one is, is the positioning of the roof. Right. right. So that's definitely uh, an important one. And then condition of the roof was actually another one that we encountered with a property that we had gone under contract with. Right. Right. Had, yeah. ex had existing <laughs> Tesla solar, but the the uh, the shingles underneath the solar were not in good condition. So it was going to need to be replaced eventually because the sellers were not willing to replace the roof. We just sort of terminated the contract. And that's mm -hmm. how you ended up with this place. So um, I want you to first sort of talk about what the process process was like from inquiring uh, uh, about solar from Tesla to actually installing. What was that timeline like? Sure, so I got the process started almost immediately after I moved in here. I couldn't wait. <laughs> mm -hmm. So uh, I first uh, inquired with Tesla around January 15th. Mm -hmm. um, I put in the, uh, I went online to the website and requested a quote there. Um, someone got, got back to me within a couple of days and had a preliminary design just sort of based on a mapping tool that they have where they can see the roofs and the trees and, uh, you know, the important factors. Um, and they can make a rough estimate of the system. Um, so I met with him for about 45 minutes, came out to the house, sat with me, answered my questions, was very good. Um, very easy and so he said if everything was good with me the next step was to get the roof inspected by their engineers to make sure that it could support the solar um, support the installation uh, to make sure that um, the roof was in good enough condition because yes. um, they won't install on a roof that needs replacing mm -hmm. um, and just uh, to make sure everything was generally safe with the electrical system as well in the breaker box um, so that happened about a week later, and then within a few days of that happening, we signed the final contract. They sent me a new design, which was approximately the same as their original, uh, their original design. Uh, they sent me the new design. I reviewed it. They went over some uh, specifics with me, such as paying for it, um, the system size, the expected generation, um, and some other details. And I signed the contract electronically then um, on around January 30th. Yeah. Um, and then within, uh, I, I guess within a week or two, they called me back to uh, to get a few more details from uh, for Excel. So um, mid mid February about. Yeah, they mm -hmm. they wanted some details for the power for the power company so, um, since the power company has their rules as far as you know what the system size can be. Um, and it varies yeah. among companies, but I think most typically it's around 105 to 110% uh, of your expected usage um, or your historical usage. In my case, I didn't have that <laughs> yes. since we had just moved in, but um, uh, 105 to 110% of your expected usage is what they'll allow. And they allowed us to go slightly above that with proof that I had registered an electric vehicle Perfect. with this address. Um, so uh, once I provided that information, Tesla got back to me uh, pretty quickly within a, a two or three days, I think. And their first, uh, first available installation date was March 11th, mm -hmm. Monday, March 11th. Um, so pretty quick. I, I mean, agree. They, they did tell me uh, that that was a little bit unusual and that if, if, if you want it done quickly, mm -hmm. spring and fall <laughs> is the time to go. 
Mm -hmm. um, it's a little bit slower then. Mm -hmm. um, so on March 11th, a uh, crew of probably eight to 10 people showed up with a couple of small work trucks and uh, you know, a box truck full of panels and equipment. And um, single day install, right? Yes. One day. It, they, it's they impressive. Sh they moved the, quick. The, the weather was, fortunately, the weather was good that day. Yep. Um, it was uh, it was cold, <laughs> yes. but um, cloudy, no, no precipitation or anything. So um, they were able to get it done. And at about, um, just before four o'clock, they switched it on to test it. Yep. Found that everything was working fine. And uh, how large is the array? Um, so I have 30 panels. Yep. There are 330 watt Panasonic panels. Um, so that adds up to 9,900 watts mm -hmm. or 9.9 .9 kilowatts. Um, the inverter is a 10 kilowatt inverter. So that's the maximum it can ever do. But there have, there has been once or twice when I've seen 10 kilowatts mm -hmm. on the, on the reading. So, mm -hmm. um, pretty good size system. Um, and, uh, yeah, it was installed in one day. After that, um, of course, <laughs> March 11th was two days before the blizzard. Yes. And uh, the blizzard kind of set back the inspection timeline by a week or two. Um, but uh, about a week and a half, two weeks later, I believe it was, the city of Aurora inspector came out, um, put a bunch of uh, warning labels and stickers on the inverters and the breaker box and all of that, and um, <clears throat> checked out the electrics and said it was it was good to go from their side. Okay. And so after that, it is a matter of getting the meters and permission to operate from the utility. Um, which is Excel. Which is Excel in this case. And that was where my holdup came in. Um, on around April 6th, I believe it was, I got an email from Excel saying that the meters had been ordered, but um, uh, it could take up to 20 business days for them to come out and inspect the system and install it. Mm -hmm. um, so I let some time pass and I <laughs> had a lot of things going on and didn't, um, you know, wasn't nagging or anything. And um, I realized, you know, I started to think it's been a while. Um, what ended up happening was I, um, you can't contact Excel directly. You have to go through Tesla. That's just the way they have it set up. Um, so I contacted Tesla and they were able to contact Excel and got back to me within a day or two saying that, um, for whatever reason, Excel hadn't had anyone in this area or um, whatever the case may be, uh, but they were gonna escalate it. And um, that was on a Thursday or Friday. And sure enough, on the following Monday, the technician from Excel showed up and it took him about five minutes <laughs> to walk back there, unplug the old meters, plug in the new meters. And um, then he sat in his truck for 15 minutes doing paperwork. Um, and I turned it on. Um, I found out that I was supposed to call Tesla first before I turned it on, but um, no problem. It worked. Yep. Um, the, the calling Tesla is a formality so that they can answer your questions. Um, make sure that you're, um, you know, make sure that you understand what you're doing, um, that sort of thing. But, uh, and they also set up your access in the app right. so that you can view all of the, the historical data because, um, they, at, the, at the time of install, they provide you with a little um, internet-enabled box that connects uh, wirelessly, I guess, to the inverter. Mm -hmm. And then from there, you can, use the, uh, you can use the Tesla app once everything is set up and turned on. The Tesla app uh, shows your solar generation, your instantaneous generation, as well as your, um, some graphs of your historical generation. And it also shows your home consumption, which is, uh, I, I guess I just didn't expect it to do that. And, um, but it makes sense. And it's, it's been interesting to see because I've never had such a, um, an instantaneous right. look at the actual energy consumption. I can see, you know, if I, if I'm running the dryer, right. I can see when the heating element cycles on and off by or the power consumption. Or when you plug in your car, right? When or you when I your... plug in my car, yeah. yeah. Yep. I can see all of that. Um, in the app, so a lot of people were curious um, on whether you did you decide to do a, a power wall or power walls. Um, so I decided not to do power walls at the recommendation of the Tesla Energy 
uh, consultant I spoke with because um, they said that in their experience this area did not really have power outages uh, very often. Of course, in the grandest of ironies, the only power outage I've had in this house was two days after we turned on the solar. <laughs> Which, by the way, um, I guess I never really thought of it, but the solar, if you don't have battery backup storage, the solar cannot work. Um, it's, it's, a, it's a requirement by the power company that you can't be feeding energy back into the grid while the power is out, um, for obvious reasons. You know, the technicians could be harmed. Um, you know, it could cause other issues for the grid. So, so are um, you reconsidering doing a power wall now? Um, I, I, I'm thinking about it. Okay. Um, you know, there, there's still, uh, it's my understanding that it's still possible for me to get the power wall with a tax credit. Mm -hmm. um, the same energy tax, the renewable energy tax credit I'll get for uh, the panels. Um, so I'm still considering it as, okay. a, as a distinct possibility within the next, uh, uh, within the next several months. Now you had a couple of options with Excel in terms of how you wanted to um, distribute the solar, correct? Right. So talk a little bit about that because that may be that may be specific to to Colorado, but at least people can get an idea about what options you did have. Right. It's specific. I'm pretty sure it's specific to Colorado, and it may be specific to um, you know a smaller service area. Um, I know Excel offers different plans, different options in different areas, but um, for me. Uh, so one of the last things um, that I had to do was uh, electronically sign the contract with Excel um, right before they uh, right before they came out and we turned it on. Um, so there were two options. One, um, there's the option to uh, have all of your generate your overage generation above and beyond what you use um, sold back to the grid at the wholesale rate which is somewhere in the neighborhood of two or three cents per kilowatt hour. Um, so significantly smaller, uh, significantly smaller amount than what you pay for it. Yeah, what is what is the electricity rate here? Um, it's approximately 12 cents a kilowatt hour. Yeah, um, yeah so it's, it's barely 20% of that. Um, so option A was everything goes into a, a bank and you get a payout at the end of each year for the wholesale rate for all of your overage generation. Um, option B was, again, all of your overage generation goes into a theoretical bank and um, it would be reapplied to your grid usage at basically a one-to-one -one rate, at a kilowatt hour one-to-one -one rate. Um, however, you, can't, you can never cash that out. Mm -hmm. Um, it stays in the bank, or if you, um, you know, if you leave Excel, it goes away. You know, it just becomes theirs, I guess. Um, if you choose option A, you can, at some point in the future, elect to switch to option B one time. If you choose option B, you're stuck with it forever. Okay. So there's not, it, it's not something where you can make the choice. And it's a little bit, um, just my personal opinion, it's a little bit unfortunate that you have to make that decision before you fully, you have a full understanding of the system. Yeah. Because I, I, I can imagine for a lot of people, you may not, um, you may you may just, you know, you, you understand how solar works, it generates electricity for you, but you have, uh, you know, some of the numbers are confusing, yeah. you know. Sure, when they first started out, they said it's 9.9 .9 kilowatts, but I had no idea what that meant. Mm -hmm. um, you know, especially up against our usage uh, until I was able to sort of track it in the app, get my bills from Excel with the solar on it, and see, um, which I guess can uh, bring us to the next topic uh, in terms of the economy of it. Mm -hmm. um, since I turned it on, um, I haven't pulled, I have, my, my net usage has been negative. Okay. Since I turned it on in May, um, I've produced more than I've used. Good. Um, which means that my bills for electricity have been zero. And um, and a side benefit, by the way, since you do own an electric car, is that you're charging your vehicle from sunshine. Exactly. So yeah. a, an incredibly nice middle finger to everyone who says <laughs> that your electric car is being powered by coal. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I, I'm. Th that's that's. 
you know, that's one of the things I wanted to be able to claim, you know, because we, we claim our cars are clean and efficient, and sure they are, but um, you, uh, you can't get more, much more efficient than charging from the sun. So um, that was a big deal for me, indeed. So, um, so total cost of the system and, and how, you, how you chose to purchase it. What was what was total total cost, and then did you did you buy outright, or did you decide to to um, they don't offer lease anymore, but finance? Right. So the total cost of the system was approximately thirty thousand six hundred dollars. That was equipment, installation, everything, um, and you can pay cash. Yep. Um, you can, or you can finance. Um, I, you know, I would assume that you can pick your own financing if you want. Um, I honestly had no idea where, where to begin with finding a company to finance my solar installation. Um, so we went with, a we went with the Tesla option where they just, um, they contract with the company they to took finance care of with it all. you. Yeah. yeah. Um, and they work with, uh, in my case anyway, they worked with a company called Sunlight Financial. Um, Sounds Which like they is, specialize in solar, maybe? I believe, uh, and, and it's a, uh, I'm not sure what the relationship is exactly, but um, the loan is through a technology credit union, which uh, just so happens to be the same company that I was financing my car with. Oh. So that was convenient. Um, but there were, um, there were two financing options through Tesla. Um, there's the 10 year option and the 20 year option. Um, so, given the given the cost of my, my system, about thirty thousand uh, dollars, the ten year option, which is the one I ended up selecting, um, it is approximately two hundred and twenty five dollars a month, which maybe would have been close to electricity bill. Definitely, okay. um, with the, the usage, especially with the older air conditioning system in this house, mm -hmm. and um, we've got some windows that could use sealing up and that sort of yes. thing. Um, the the that number is definitely it's it's close it's close to maybe lower than what have what um, electricity would have been I haven't had a chance to do the math on that yet um, but uh, yeah it's about two hundred twenty five dollars a month and um, the nice thing is it's consistent it's going to be that every month you know if I happen to go over at some point which um, is starting to look relatively unlikely at this point as we're starting to get closer to fall. Um, you know, there'll, there'll be a small electricity bill, you know, it won't be, it won't be very large. Um, so, uh, I definitely getting money, my money's worth in that regard. Um, so the, uh, uh, you know, I, I'm not sure what's typical for the rates, but, um, at the time that we, uh, took the financing, the 10 year was, I believe, uh, I believe it was 3.99% and the 20 year was 4.99%. Mm -hmm. um, the monthly payment for the 20 year would have been approximately $150. Mm -hmm. um, and there's a, there's a little caveat to this that um, I think confuses some people. The way they do their financing is they calculate your monthly payment based on the assumption that you were taking the federal tax credit oh, interesting. and applying it this back. Is, this is Tesla, correct? Yes. Okay, yep. Yes. Yep. Uh, this is Tesla. Yeah, it may not apply to others, um, but they assume that you're taking the federal tax credit and you're going to pay it back against your loan within yes. 18 months of starting the loan. Yeah. Um, Which is not quite clear. Uh, some, it, right. so I, I, you know, I thought through that as well as I looked at their website. Um, some people may not be able to leverage the entire tax credit exactly. based, on, based on their tax liabilities, right? Right. Other people may and may choose not to roll it back into mm -hmm. whatever is owed. Yeah, right. So what they explain is that if you choose not to, then um, your monthly payment for the first 18 months will be this amount, uh -huh. the amounts that I just said. Um, and if you, uh, and then after that 18, 18 months, if you've not paid in the, uh, the tax credit amount um, on top of your loan payments it goes up it will your monthly payment will go up interesting because your monthly payment is based on the assumption that you're going to do that yeah so that's kind of the yeah. it, it's a little bit confusing 
Um, but that's that's kind of the situation with that. So, you know, I expect to take the tax credit, um, you know, when I file next year and then pay that in against my loan. And um, I'm, you know, for me, you know, for some people it may not be economically feasible, but for me, the 10 year option, uh, the 10 year option seemed like the way to go, get it paid off, get it out of the way. Um, and just, um, you know, once it's paid off, it's free. Yeah. It's yep. free energy. There's free no energy. more yep. monthly energy bill. Mm -hmm. It's gone. And so, um, so overall pretty satisfied with the experience from, from beginning to end. Yeah. I mean, I, it was a, I've, I've, you know, to be fair, I've heard a couple of horror stories from people yes. about, yep. you know, they had this problem or that with the Tesla solar and getting it installed or getting it repaired or whatever the case may be. But I mean, I had no issues. I mean, it, the timeline was relatively quick, uh, comparatively. The worst part was waiting for Excel to yes. turn it on, right? <laughs> right. That and was the most frustrating part because I remember mm -hmm. trying to trying to help and go back door with some people yeah. that that I know that are part of the Denver Tesla Club that work for Excel, and yeah, I mean, it eventually got done, but yeah, the, you have to you have to. It, it seems like the solution is just give them give them their time, and if they don't do it in their in the, in their promised time, start calling. Yes, <laughs> yeah, might have to just. Uh, give Tesla a call and ask them for some assistance. Right, right. But, um, otherwise, the process has been great. Good. It's, um, and it's it's worked fine, no issues, and um, yeah, the generation has been great. Good, good to hear. Well, thank you, Scott, for taking some time to sit on your roof as the sun has <laughs> set. Actually, it's a beautiful, it's a beautiful, beautiful view, right? Yeah, for We've sure. Mountains over here. Mountains Look over here. You've got some beautiful clouds and colors. Um, so I'm glad you're liking the house. That that that's also another thing that makes me very very happy um, that, that you're enjoying it. Minus some small things <laughs> that that uh, you know hopefully will eventually be addressed. But well, they're all going to be like that, right? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> absolutely. Um, thanks again, and um, we'll talk soon. So thanks everyone for tuning in, and would love to know what you think in the comments down below. Do you have plans to get solar? Will it be Tesla solar? And do you own an electric car? Sign off in the comments and talk soon.